So I get a lot of requests of people wanting me to show them how to grade particular camera profiles. And what I wanna do in this episode is show you a slightly broken down version of my fixed broadcast notary that I use on every single job. That's for BBC, Amazon, ITV, branded content, whatever it is, I use the same fixed notary. I'm gonna show you exactly how to build it and show you how easy it is to grade any camera profile. So to show you those examples, I've got here, this is Canon Log 3. I've got Canon with uh, not log, so it's just Canon wide gamut. I've got Sony S-Log3, I've got, uh, this is red, I've got Blackmagic Design Raw, ARRI, and even iPhone footage. And if your camera profile is not in this list, I promise you that this fixed notary will work for any camera profile. So it's gonna be a really great way of moving forward. Also, I'm gonna show you good solid techniques that I used on my day-to-day -day broadcast grading that will give you consistently good color grading results. So stick with this one. So I've got my first shot here. This is Canon Log 3. So what I wanna do is go to my color management settings and just have a look at what's going on. And these are currently set to the default. Now, I'm not gonna work in the automatic color management. We're gonna use color space transforms. And I've got quite a few episodes on that. I'll put links to those in the description. But basically, if you follow what I'm doing here, and I will put this actual notary when it's finished in the description in a link, and you'll be able to download it. But I'm gonna show you how to build it from scratch. So our timeline color space, as you know, wants to be a larger color space. That allows us to take any camera profile and have it comfortably working in a larger color space. So the one I use, you can use Aces, you can use ARRI, you can use whatever you actually prefer, but I work in DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. This is a really good starting point for me. And my output color space, as we all know, needs to match my display, which is currently calibrated to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. That is what my delivery is, so that's what my monitor is calibrated to, and that's the only output color space that's worth putting in there if you're using a Gamma 2.4 monitor. All right, let's press save to that. I could actually save that as a profile, by the way, so you can have it as a default. And I'm gonna press save. The first part of building our fixed notary is to get our color space transforms because we do want to work color managed, but we wanna do it manually, not automatically. And this is the key to being able to switch between these different camera profiles really easily. So node number one here, we're gonna build it from scratch. There's absolutely nothing going on here so far. And I'm just gonna to go to my effects, and I've got these filtered actually by favorites. So normally you'd have it on show all, you'd see all your effects, but I've got my favorite showing. These are the ones that I use uh, most of the time. I'm gonna take my color space transform here, and what we're trying to build up here is the perfect notary that we can save and apply it to every single job that we use moving forward forever. And you'll slowly start adapting it, but let's just build that notary up. Node number one is gonna take our camera color space into a unified color space that all our clips are gonna work in, and that will be DaVinci Wide Gamut in this instance. So our output color space here, DaVinci Wide Gamut, and our output gamma is DaVinci Intermediate. Keep all these as default for now, I'm gonna show you why in a moment. And our input color space is the camera source itself, so the camera color space. In this case, that is Canon, and it is C log three. I'm gonna show you what to do if you don't know what that color space is as well. So Canon log three, there we go. So this still looks wrong. That's because we've sent it to DaVinci Wide Gamut. My monitor doesn't display DaVinci Wide Gamut, it displays Rick 709 Gamma 2.4. So this is still no good for me. So what I wanna be able to do before I start grading is see in the correct color space. I wanna see my display color space, not the camera color space. Let's put another CST. I'm gonna press Option S to add a serial. And I'm gonna move this over here because this is actually gonna be right near the very end of our node tree. I'm gonna take another color space transform. And we've currently sent Canon up to DaVinci Wide Gamut. At the end, I wanna come from DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate. And our output color space is Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. And this, by switching this on now, this is gonna look correct. This will look what that camera was seeing when they filmed this on that rooftop, camera 2.4, there we go. So that looks much better starting point for me now. So this node here will always be, and will never change, I'm just gonna label it now, it will be DaVinci Wide Gamut 2709. So I'm gonna grade underneath it so I can see correctly what the camera was seeing. I wanna see in display space, not in the camera color space. 
This node, number one, is the one that will change depending on what flavor we're working with down here. And all we're gonna change is the input color space. So let's build the node tree first, and then I'll apply it to those other shots and show you just how quick and easy it is to get good, consistent results with your color grading using this fixed node tree, okay? And this is based on my actual broadcast node tree that I use day to day. Let me just show you something, because people ask me, what should this OOTF, what is all this stuff? What, what are we doing with this? Basically, DaVinci Resolve knows what it's doing with these settings. So it's gonna apply the correct transform function. These are transform functions, depending on whether it's a camera color space or a display color space or a working larger color space. All right, so we've got our DaVinci wide gamut. We've got our Canon Log3. These are both large color spaces. So the correct checkboxes have been applied automatically. If we look at our last one, this is going from a large working color space, DaVinci Wide Gamut, to a display color space. So automatically, Resolve has ticked the correct boxes. If I just temporarily swap these around, so we're gonna go from a display space to a large color space, watch what happens. The tick boxes move automatically. So basically, you can trust what DaVinci Resolve is doing with those tick boxes, all right? So just trust it, it works. What we need to do now is build the node structure, which I'm gonna build the nodes first, and then I'm gonna go in and fill them in and start doing an actual grade for you on these shots. So I'm gonna press option S, which is gonna give me a serial, and I'm gonna call this balance and exposure, okay? Sometimes I have this on two nodes, but just for this, I'm gonna put it all on one node. I'm not gonna actually do it yet, I'm gonna build the node tree first. So let's add another one. This next one is gonna be my contrast. And I could build another one, and this one is gonna be saturation. So when I get to this point here, I would have got myself in a really good starting point. And what I want to do then is build the node structure that's gonna be my fine adjustment. So things like temperature, uh, adjusting highlights, doing anything with the warper tool curves, that kind of thing. And what these are gonna do is come from parallels, and I'll explain why. So I'm gonna add a serial first, and then I'm gonna add some parallels. I'm pressing Option P. Let's just do four for now. You can have this as big as you want, but these are basically gonna be my sort of fine-tuning nodes. Okay, this is fine-tuning the, the, the look that we've got when we get to this point here. Remember, we're always grading under this CST, and you'll always be grading under any film looks that you've got going on, which I'm gonna do in a moment. So let's label up these some examples. So this could be, for example, temperature. Uh, this one here might be HDR, it might be highlights in the, in the HDR tool, for example, okay? This one here, for example, might be anything I do with the warper. And this one here is curves. And you can have as many of these as you like. So if you use lots of different curves, you might wanna split those up into extra parallel nodes. But the point of this is that when we've graded up to here, we've got a really good solid foundation and we then split off so this one will go and feed our temperature. But when I do my highlight work here, I want it to come from this here, not from what I've done with the temperature. When I do my warper, I want it to come from this point here, to come down here, because this is a really good solid grade up to this point here. So this one feeds, this one feeds, this one, and then we're feeding off into these various branches. And this gives us a really good, solid, consistent grade. This is kind of one of the secrets to my grading being very consistent. The next thing I'm gonna do is add another serial after this. I'm gonna call this one, I'm gonna run out of room in a minute, but I'm gonna call this one trim. And what this is, is just an extra node on the end that allows me to fine tune all of these grades that are going on here, okay? This is all working in DaVinci wide gamut, remember, okay? So all these little tweaks that I've done here, I can then do an overall little tweak in here. That might just be an extra little bit of contrast. It might be just lifting shadows. It could be anything like that. So that's just there. And remember, you don't have to use the node just because it's there. The idea of the fixed node tree is this is a reminder for me to grade in a good methodical order to get good consistent results. The next thing I'm gonna do is add another serial, and then I'm gonna make a parallel off that. And you might want two or three parallels here, but these are basically gonna be my power windows. So any work that I'm doing where I'm isolating an area are gonna happen in this little parallel node tree here. So I'm gonna call this one power window one. I'm gonna call this one here power window two. And I'm gonna call this one here power window three. All right, I'm gonna run out of room here, so let me just close down my gallery for a second and move that over so you can see what's going on. That's our end node tree. And then what I want is another, probably one, maybe two more 
cereals here, and these are gonna be things like my grain or textures and things like that. So let's just put in here, let's call it, uh, call it texture. The next thing I need to add in here is any particular looks that you might be doing because you're, what you're gonna do is grade underneath those looks. So the classic one is the Kodak 2383 film look that's built into DaVinci Resolve. As you know from my episode, again, I'll put a link to it in the description on how to correctly build these film LUTs, but they need to be working in a different gamma than 709. So let me show you that. And again, I've done a whole episode on this, so check that episode out if you're unsure what I'm doing here. But what you need to do is add another serial here, and I'll do another serial as well. And let's just apply the film look. So let's take any one of these built in, but this one, kind of 2383 is a very popular one. I'm gonna drag and drop that on. And as you can see, the image goes a little bit too strong, okay? It's not that good. And as explained in that episode, it's because the input into here needs to be a different color space than what's currently feeding it. And what's currently feeding it is this. If we go to our effects here, Rec 79 Gamma 2.4, that's wrong. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick onto this node another color space transform. Now, I can't actually see that node to apply it. So what you do, middle mouse click, I'm using a pen, but it's the same thing. You just middle click and you can drag this around then. So now I can see the node, drag a color space transform on it. And only do this if you're gonna use this Kodak film LUT or any one of these LUTs, you've got a Fuji film LUT, but they're expecting Cineon film log, not Gamma 2.4. So what you need to do is say Rec 709 up here. I'll do this as quick as I can. And it is, the input is Gamma 2.4 because that's what we've fed it. And the output color space here is gonna be still Rec 709, but in a different gamma, which is Cineon Film Log. Now that Kodak film emulation looks a lot more usable. And what's covered in that video is the fact that I highlight these together, right click and create what's called a compound node. So this is two nodes inside that node. And what that allows me to do is adjust the strength using this key button here. Basically using this key output tool, I can adjust the strength so at zero, that's effectively not applied. And at 100, you're at full strength. I'm gonna call that Kodak. Uh, if you wanted to use a different one, of course, what you can do is right-hand click on here. You can say, show compound node. And then all you gotta do is right-click here and you can change that LUT to be any one of the other ones. Okay, you just simply switch. And then click on here and you're back out. So we've now got the foundation of a good solid notary. This is a slightly simplified version of my advanced one that I covered in my master classes, but this is a great notary to be working with, to work with any camera color space that you've got going on. All right, this will give you a good disciplined, solid grade workflow. So I should probably save this at this point here, okay? And I'm gonna save it with this disabled. That way it's not applied unless I switch it on. So I'm gonna go to my gallery here, and I'm gonna right click on here and I'm gonna say grab still. So what we've got basically is a empty uh, node tree, but with our CSTs ready to go. And I'm gonna show you how I would actually go about grading this now. So we've got the correct input color space. I'm gonna switch my film print emulation on. Okay, so this is if I want to work with a bit of a look and I would grade underneath this look because as you can see, my scopes have already changed what they're doing. Let's just switch that off. So because I've got this going on, if I'm gonna work underneath it, I need it on all the time because it's affecting my overall look. And then I'm gonna grade underneath this. So we're gonna grade underneath these two effectively. I'm gonna dial it back a little bit because it's a bit strong. So let's just do, let's say half mix of that, something like that. And now I'm gonna start balancing. So we go to our first node, which is balance and exposure. So to do that, I'm gonna keep the scopes open so you can see what's going on, but I'd probably go to the HDR tool, have a look at our exposure. Let's just bring that down a little bit, something like that. I would be looking at our balance. So let's see what's going on here. It's actually really nicely balanced, but let's see what happens in our primaries. If I go to my offset tool, and you can grade this however you want now, obviously, but I'm just trying to get a really good starting point. And there we go, something like that. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is apply contrast. There's several different ways you can apply contrast. I'm gonna just do it quickly here, just adding the basic contrast tool, or you could even go into the HDR wheel and add contrast down here. Okay, many, many different ways of doing it. So I prefer to work in the primaries with my contrast. So I'm just gonna increase contrast here a little bit. 
And like I said, there's many, many different ways of doing it, but I'm not gonna cover that in this particular episode. Let's go to our saturation. Does it need any saturation? It's actually looking pretty saturated to me, but let's just add a little bit anyway. Go to our HDR tool for that. Add a little bit of saturation in. And we should have here now a really good starting point, which I think we have. At this point here, if this should look good, and if it doesn't look good, you shouldn't move forward. This is the point at where you want this good, because what we're gonna do now is branch off into these different nodes and make our fine tune adjustments. So for example, top one here, temperature. Let's just go to our color temperature. I like to do this in the HDR tool. And uh, let's just have a look at what's going on there. Something like that. And then if I go and make change, let's say I wanna use the warper here. Okay, I might wanna make a change to the hue on her dress. I can go to the warper, but I don't want it to be affected by what I just did on the temperature. I wanna take the feed from here, from this saturation point. So we've got balance exposure, contrast, saturation is feeding the warper directly. So I'm gonna get the best possible outcome that I can. So I could go in here now, maybe do, I don't know, you might wanna do hue versus saturation. And yeah, let's just make sure that's wide and that's wide. And there is it. So we're just desaturating a little bit of her dress there. And that is a good example. The trim here would be any adjustments I wanna to make to the overall look that I've done so far. So I might wanna just lift up, maybe I just wanna lift up the shadows a little bit. So we could do that here with lift, something like that. All right, so this is where I'd make shapes and windows. If I wanna start isolating anyone in there, I would do that on these nodes here to create some power windows. So let's just have a quick look at that for an example. Something like that. And then we can again increase our, maybe increase our gain a little bit and our offset. Something like that. I'm gonna switch that on and off just to see if it's looking better, which it is. And I don't wanna do anything on these. These are just gonna stay there as empty nodes. So we've done it, we've got a really good look going on there and I've just followed this methodical workflow. So let's do this now on another image. So I'm gonna take this one here. This is Canon, but Canon wide gamut. So it's not log. The fact it's not log means we don't use one of the log profiles, okay? So I'm gonna to go to my gallery. I'm gonna take our fixed node tree. I'm gonna right click and say apply. And this looks wrong. And why does it look wrong? Because it's currently set to Canon C log three. So we're gonna change that. The only thing we have to change is this. All these nodes are empty. There's no balancing going on. And our Kodak LUT is off. I'm gonna leave that off. So we're gonna, you don't always have to have it on. So I'm gonna to go to my effects with this node active. And we're gonna put in here the correct color space. Now, because it's not log, we actually wanna set this to be Rec 709. Okay, so what it's actually expecting is it to be Rec 709, but slightly wider profile. So I'm not gonna to get to Gamma 2.4, I'm gonna press Rec 709, okay? And now it looks a lot better, but it's a little bit flat. And the idea of this profile is that you do add a bit of contrast and saturation to it yourself to taste, okay? So we're gonna go to our balance and exposure. I'm doing this all underneath the, the 709 node, so my display looks correct. And we're going to balance exposure. So let's bring up our graph here. Let's see what's going on. So I'm going to go to my HDR exposure tool. Let's just boost this up a little bit, I think. And I'm going to go back to my primaries. Let's bring our shadows down because they've lifted a bit. Bring our game back up. Okay. I could be doing that as contrast as well. Okay, so it's a very similar tool. Bring our contrast up like so. And go on to our saturation. Let's see if it needs any more saturation. Again, I'm gonna do that in the HDR tool. So it's global saturations here. So I'm used to doing this on the panel. That's why I'm moving around a little bit. And we've got a bit of a cast going on here. So I'm gonna go back to my balance tool. There's no reason why you can't just keep moving between these, okay? You don't have to move linearly forward because as I make a changes here, this affects this one and this one. So I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna to go to my primaries here and I'm just gonna adjust my offset a little bit, something like that. Now I need to add a little bit more saturation. So this is kind of how I'm working. Let's add a bit of HDR saturation. And there we go, something like that. So that's looking good. And I didn't use the Kodak film print emulation on this. I wanted this to just be a clean look. So I'm just gonna leave that switched off. I can then go in here and do the temperature and all the other adjustments, but you can see how I got a really good start straight away. Again, let's go to this one, let's go to the Sony one. I'm gonna drag and drop my fixed no tree. Again, it's gonna be wrong to start with because we've currently got it set to Canon C Log 3. What I'm gonna do is, if I right hand click in here, I can say clean up node graph, okay? And then we've got now my node graph, nice and clean. Click on here, go to my effects, and let's change this to be the correct 
camera color space, which is your Sony S Log 3 and it's Sony Cinema Gamut 3. There. Okay, so now we've got our really good starting point, and now we go ahead, balance, exposure, contrast, saturation, as we did before. By using the fixed notary, you're staying disciplined, and you can switch between your different camera profiles really easily. So let's just have a quick look at these. I'm gonna go and drop this on. All I've gotta do on here is say, in fact, what I'm gonna do, let's clean up this no graph, let's do this properly. If I take this one and set it to a blank, so I'm gonna just say use timeline, use timeline, that way it won't come in in the incorrect camera space, it will come in with no camera space. So I'm gonna right and click and save that. This will be our new fixed notary moving forward. This is the one that I'll save as a link in the description. And basically when we apply this, the first thing you have to do is apply the camera profile. So in this case, this is red. So let's go to red wide gamut and red lock 3G10. And now we've got our great starting point because we've got the CST already applied under here. All right, so we've got the CST bringing us from DaVinci Wide Gamut back to 709 2.4. Now we can just start grading. So it's really quick and easy, okay? Same with this one, let's use our new default one. All we've got to do is change what's on node number one. I'm gonna go in here and just show you how easy it is to change all these camera profiles ready to start grading. This is, uh, oh, I always forget which one this is. It's Pocket 4K Film 4, and uh, again, Pocket 4K Film Gym 4. There's our great starting point, ready to start grading. Let's get it again to this one. Now, another one. Go through here, let's go to ARRI Wide Gamut 3 and ARRI Log C3. There we go, brilliant. And now what do we do with the iPhone footage? I've done, uh, again, I've done another episode fully explaining this, but if we click on this one, let's take our blank tree, and all we're gonna do on this one is convert it into Rec 709. So our profile, our camera profile, I can't quite see that, let's clean up here. Yeah, there we go, is Rec 709, because that's what it was shot in. If you're working on the new iPhone 15s, you might find this is Rec 2020, and you wanna be working in HDR, but this one was shot on an iPhone 14, Rec 709, and Rec 709. Don't put Gamma 2.4, because it's not got a Gamma, it's Rec 709. So the Gamma 2.4 is a display Gamma, okay? It's not a source, camera source Gamma. So we've got the 709 Gamma 2.4 identified on this node here and we're ready to start grading. So that shows you how quick and easy it is to apply this fixed notary. This is the only notary you're gonna need. It's absolutely brilliant. I'll put a link to it. Use it and then elaborate on it. If you find you need more serials on the end, add those serials and then save it as your own. Now, if you wanna see how I apply that to drone footage, have a look at this video that's appearing here. And there's also a tip in there on how to correct auto exposure, which is a real problem sometimes with drone footage. You get that auto exposure. So there's a really good tip in that video showing you on that. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode.